Magnus on What If You Travel for another rocking tutorial for you. 2022, first video tutorial of the year. I hope you guys had an amazing start of the year. And with that being said, let's dive just right into this tutorial. You asked for this video so many times because you loved my photos on Instagram, especially this one with this blue, old vintage blue and orange look. Um, like this girl walking on the bridge. You, many of you asked how how do you get this kind of tones? How do you color grade this kind of pictures? And without mentioning these legs on a train, this candid photo that I loved that I took on the train and then I color graded it like that and you guys showed so much appreciation for it. So I decided to go with a tutorial. Um, you cannot achieve an orange and teal look in a photo that doesn't have any orange or teal. So make sure that you have a photo with those colors in it. Uh, of course, I'm not going too much into the detail of the tools that I'm using because I will upload more videos to cover those topics, but you can follow my steps. You can grab one of your photos and add it with me. Pause this video anytime you want, take your time, and let's add it together. First thing we want to do is to crop the image four by five if you're going to use this for Instagram so I don't have to think about this anymore. This is how I like it. So we open camera raw and we're going to use the geometry tool to level up the photo if it's not 100% uh, straight and we hit okay. So much better. Before opening camera raw to start editing, uh, duplicate the layer, right click, merge visible. This will help you to visualize this photo in camera raw with the crop. Now I know I told you that you should use a photo which already has some blue colors. Not completely true. You can also achieve this look if you have gray in your photo because that works perfectly. Cool, open camera raw and let's do some basic corrections at the beginning. If you slide the temperature to the left toward the blues, you already have that kind of look. Now the blue, the gray is looking bluish. That's awesome. Increase exposure a little bit more, down with the highlights so that we can see some more details in those lights, up with the shadows to reveal those details in the dark areas, and the blacks, like I would say minus 10. Remember that you can watch this tutorial also in Spanish and in Italian. Uh, just go to my homepage and you'll find this video um, in uh, different languages. We're also going to use some clarity that sucks out the colors from an image, but not much this time. I would say I like it this way. Yeah. Let's increase the vibrance a little, like plus 15 and reduce the saturation to minus four. What we're going to do now, it's one of my favorite parts, playing with the light. Now you can see here that we already have the two different colors, the blue and the yellowish. They are opposite on, on the color wheel. That's why it's so pleasant to the eye. I want to add more atmosphere to those lights, more color, and we can do this using the um, radial gradient. We're gonna place one, right here on top of these lights. Not too big, I would say like that. Increase the exposure. We're going down with the highlights a little more, up with the shadows to help us create some atmosphere. And then we pick a color that we want these lights to have, like this, like kind of golden. I think I'm going to go down with the saturation because it looks too punchy and you can do the same to apply this effect to the other lights. You can duplicate the mask and then you move it to the other side and you adjust the position. We're going to um, increase the highlights here in the reflection of the lights and also increase the shadows to make it look more natural and then we are going to duplicate this one and apply it to the other reflection. Now I'm happy with it. Let's go play a little bit with the colors now. Let's slide all the way to the left, the magentas, the purple, the green tones, and let's decrease also the yellows and let's change the hue. 
and we're only touching the reds add some aquas to the blue we're going to slide the towards the aquas a little bit something like that yeah sorry to interrupt guys i'm editing the video right now and i realized the um screen recording software i was using just for some reasons decided to stop but no worries we'll keep doing this from here where were we um we changed the hue now we go to luminance and we slightly decrease the luminance of the red to add some more contrast to this red signal that says or in heights which is my stop great now let's have some fun see this light up here we're going to turn it on how let me show you we're going to use again the radial gradient i'm going to adjust the size to the light bulb boost the exposure and then i'm going to change the color picking a nice warm tone like this one to make it match with the lights in the train and boom there you have it we turned it on but it doesn't look that natural does it so what can we do now i'm going to repeat this process adding another radial gradient around the light bulb increasing the exposure just a tiny bit like this and then changing the color to fit the same warm tone and subtracting this effect from the light bulb because we already worked on that otherwise it would be too much but there's one more thing that I would do to make it look even more realistic. I'm going to use the brush. I will reduce the flow. Then I'll increase the exposure. Just a few points. Pick the same warm tones. And I'm going to paint around here. And so much better. Now it really looks like the light is turned on. Easy, quick, and it really makes a difference. Now we're going to apply this effect to the lights inside the train by using another brush. Amazing. Now to make it look a little bit more vintage, we're going to use the curves. This part down here only affects the dark areas and we want to move it this way. We're going up to apply that washed out look. Beautiful. Before moving to the color wheels, I want to play a little more with the curves. I want to add more yellow in the highlights one point of red in the shadows and a little more of yellow in the shadows and some more blue in the highlights now we're ready i'm going to add some blues and aquas to the mid-tones so it looks even cooler some warm tones in the shadows and the highlight towards the aquas let's take a look beautiful we're getting there uh, let's go to the gradients again with the help of those leading lights, we want to apply two linear gradients, one to the left and one to the right, and we're going to reduce the exposure so that the person who's looking at this picture does not get distracted by the lights and the reflections around this door. There's so much going on. Now to make this subject more visible, radial gradient, we'll place it on top of him, increase the exposure, shadows a little bit and the highlights and there you have it now we can see him i think we're done here back to the original tutorial by the way if here inside is freezing i should probably turn up the heating a little more come with me i want to show you something Google, what's the weather like? It's 7 and sunny. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a high of 15 and a low of 7. All right. Due to current wind conditions, it feels like it's minus 10. Oh my goodness, guys, that was insane. Now I'm colder than before. Okay, let's keep going. The only thing we're going to do our last move is to apply a new layer mask with some snow so we can uh, make this um, photo more dramatic and more interesting. So click on the layer, drag it on the photo and drop it there. The first thing is changing the blending mode from normal to screen, just the size. But there's something off still that uh, we want to modify. The snow looks awesome, but we want to add some blur, some motion blur to the photo, to the, to the snow. So we go to 
filter, blur, motion blur. Keep it like like this, like 99 or 100 in this case. Um, decrease the opacity. Promise the last thing I would do to this photo um, is to enhance a little bit of that natural light that we have on the top uh, right corner. So grab your brush, select the size, make it very big. Make sure it's selected in um, the white color. The opacity probably to 20%. Click on the layer and then just apply one, two or three like this. Let's see the before and after from here. Look at this, guys. Now I'm happy with it. Now I really like it. If you're still with me, wow. Thank you so much. I hope it was useful and that you found it interesting. Uh, I will be uploading more tutorials, so stick around and I'll see you in the next video.